Hey guys, welcome back to this brand new video. Today I'm going to do a DaVinci Resolve beginners tutorial and I'll also show you how to edit in DaVinci Resolve. But first guys, if you want, you can go down on this video in the comment section and click on the first comment that I pinned. This will bring you to my Fiverr. And here as you can see on my Fiverr, you can get a logo or a banner or both for your YouTube channel if you want. But now back to the video. Now, in case you don't have DaVinci Resolve yet, my previous video, I'll link it in the right corner above here, actually shows you how to download and install DaVinci Resolve, in case you haven't done that yet, for free. But in any case, let's jump right in. This is the layout you will see if you download DaVinci Resolve. This is what you will see. Now, I actually already have folders here with projects in them, as you can see right here. These are my projects for my channel. You can click here to go back. And if you want to add a folder, you can just simply do that here and make a folder and then drag the videos in there. But because you are probably new to it, you only have this untitled project right here. But first I want to show you guys something that a lot of people when they just start to use DaVinci Resolve don't actually know. And that's where the actual project files are at. So you click right here. As you can see, it says local database. You click on details here. Open file location. And as you can see here, you have the path. And then here, if you click on resolve projects, go to users, guest, projects, and then uh, I do this one as my channel. And as you can see right here, I have all of my videos. And if I go to this one, for example, you can see right here, this is the project file. So that way you actually know where it will be saved. But we are actually just gonna go here. And of course, double click on this here. So to actually gonna start a project. As you can see down here, you have different tabs, different workspaces. So the first one here is the media pool. This is where you can drag all of your projects, but you can actually also do that in edit. I'll show you in a second. The cut is basically a more basic version of editing. And here you can actually as well, as you can see, do full screen if you need to. Then here in the edit tab is where you're going to work mainly. It's where you're going to do most of the editing. In fusion, you can add effects here so as a fix. Color here is of course for color grading, everything from everything, of course, from lightness to darkness, to exposure, to the shadows, and also color grading. Fairlight here is a more advanced tab for audio and here in the deliver tab you will see the advanced rendering options so it's nicely put in order here from importing your media to editing to adding effects and colors to finish off with the audio and then actually exporting the project but since this is a basic tutorial i'm mostly focused on the basics here and so that's why we're going to go into the edit right here directly i will although also show you if you go to the right corner right here and click here on the settings once again i'll go over the basics here only is here for example the resolution is very important i do 920 by 1080 like every video and thumbnail on youtube but if you want it at a higher resolution if you have a bigger screen as well you can also do that and put it up all the way to ultra hd here but that of course depends on your resolution if the aspect ratio this the frame rate so you can put it at 25 or 30 but since i generally record in 60 i'll just put this at 60 but that's entirely up to you and as you see in a second i will import the media anyway in 60 fps i'll show you how anyway and now you can set some of these settings here go here to the three dots here you can go to a default preset so if you want to save the settings that you just did you can just do save current settings as preset and that will actually add a new tab here with presets where you can just click on it and load the preset that you made and use it in every project from now on i'm just going to show you right now i'm going to import media so what i do is right click here and do import media now this right here is my file so i'm going to double click on it asks you to change frame rate now i know that my project as you just saw is in 24 or 25 but the video that i actually recorded is in 60 fps what i do then is change i'm going to do change if i drag it here into the timeline because i can be bothered and i just have to import it and say change and i know it will be 60 fps as you can see here in the quick export the frame rate Okay, so I'm going to just hide the inspector right here for a second and I'm going to click this button here. This is the dual viewer mode. So you probably have it like this. You will actually have a preview window. So when I remove this for a second and I drag it into here, as you can see through the audio right here and it comes to important points in the video. You can just right click here and do a mark in and then you go to a different part of the video, for example here, and you can do a mark out. But since I only make YouTube videos and I only have one recording, so I don't have a couple of recordings, I only have one recording, which is the one right here. I just immediately drag it into the timeline here without thinking about even the window, the preview window. So for me, I can just re-click on this, put it into single viewer mode, so my main window here, and just bring up the inspector again because we will use the inspector. As you can see, I have my footage right here. This is what the recording is. The first audio is everything that's in Windows, so Windows sounds. If music is playing is my first audio here and my second audio would be my voice so the recording of my voice and basically what i always start doing is called a trim start so i just drag this part until my introduction to the video basically first is some rambling and make sure that some settings are in place but then at some point i will actually start talking and record the video so that's what i'm going to search for right now okay so i found it it's right here so what i'm going to do now is just take this beginning here and just drag it all the way there As you can see, there we go. So now we'll actually start here. Now as you can see, there is some free space here. So what I tend to do is just watch exactly where I start talking. And let's just listen here for a moment. Hey guys, and welcome back. Today I'm showing you how to download and install DaVinci Resolve. Now that is the beginning. Yeah. 
So I just generally start just right at the point when I start talking. That's nothing complicated. I just do that again. And so as you can see, the minute the video starts. Hey guys, and welcome back. Today I'm showing you how to download and install DaVinci Resolve. It immediately goes to there. So then actually also cut off at the moment where I don't say anything anymore, when there's like a silence. So it is actually going to be the blade edit mode, but because you don't always want to drag this and just go ahead and do it at a specific point, it's, it's too, it's going to be too annoying to do this every time and then specifically choose a point. So you don't want to do it like that. You actually have a shortcut normally on your keyboard, which is going to be control B. And as you can see, it cut it right at the point where the cursor is. So once again, that's control B. Just hold control and then click B. And it will cut at the exact moment where the cursor is in question. So after that, it kind of talks for itself. I just see that here there's no audio recording whatsoever. So I can just skip over that. And here I can see that I start talking again. So I'm going to jump right in. And as you can see, there we go. Just control B again and then I just stick it to here. So basically I always keep like a distance right here. I see what part I want to cut and I just drag it to here. I'm just going to type DaVinci Resolve here. Now the moments like silence and the little mouth noises I always want to cut out. So I just make sure that I just start a bit later. DaVinci Resolve here. So as you can see, there you go. I actually wanted to import a second media here. So I'm going to go here, right click and do import media. And the second media is going to be my promo video. So basically talking about my Fiverr. So I'm just going to double click it here. So it's the same principle here. I just take it and drag it in here. Now, if you actually have a video and you put it above here. So for example, I add another audio track here. Just do it in stereo always. And I drag this down so that it doesn't overlay the other audio. And so as you can see, if I have this right here, it's always going to be the video that's above the other video that will have a priority. So as you can see, I don't see the Google search bar anymore. I see this video of mine right here that explains about my Fiverr. That's the one I'll see because it's the one above. So that one always has a priority. So keep that in mind. But there you go. I can just right click on these tracks again and do delete track. And so now as you can see, I simply put it next to this clip and it will just go into the other clip. So I'm going to jump right in. But first, guys, if you want, you can see simple as that there we go so i can now stick this to this one now i will also go a little bit over the video inspector right here so here as you can see you can zoom put it in a certain position so you can also rotate it obviously here and you can do that by this arrow so this arrow will allow you to do to actually change and this right here if you're going to go into a specific moment of a video and you click this little diamond here it will see it as a check mark a checkpoint and then if you continue to a different point in a video you can do the diamond again and then you'll change the, uh, the in this case the zoom for example so you can also crop the whole clip so you can also change the speed now, i was actually used that my timeline is rippled so when the speed was actually slower or faster it was actually like this it will drag out the timeline so like if you do it like this it will go faster the clip and if you do it like this so under 100 it will go slower so you can also also stabilize it but that's just some quick essentials here in the video inspector very important now, if for example you want to add something as simple as text to your video you can just go up here to effects as you can see here and we're already there here in titles so as you can see here to already preview where the text will be and here as you can see for example in the fusion titles there will actually be transitions with the titles this one just disappears into itself this one is a clean and simple one but if you for example want to put one above you can just take this drag it right here and you can just it will create a new video track once again and you can just put it above the clip in question now because it's white it wouldn't be visible in this case so just make it black there we go you have the color right here or you can just select it right here click ok and as you can see there it is so it's overlaying a bit this is where you do that and it will have of course all of the settings that go with it so you can here choose a font you have the sizes depending on the font you will have the different sizes so italic of course bold light here you can do the size you can actually do an alignment here so if you want it to be in the corner in the middle you can do the same for position and zoom once again you can use the diamonds to actually do an animation with the actual text so i can actually show the zoom in this case in case you guys want to know it or if you don't know so i'm going to click the diamond right here then i'm going to go to different position of the video let's say right here diamond again well in this case let's say put it up why not so now as you can see if i go back to the video i'm just going to type davinci resolve here as simple as that it went from one point to the other and it did the animation that i asked that's how simple it is and that's also how it works once again with the zoom in of a normal video as i showed earlier we're just going to delete this we don't need it so make sure that only one clip is selected in that case do right click and then you do delete selected and there you go you can by the way also just put this to the side for a second unlink clips so if you see this right here this logo this icon symbolizes a link so if i click on that and i do link clips i can uncheck it Make sure you click uh, somewhere else to deselect the clips. And as you can see, now I can move the video and the audio apart from each other. And if you want to link them again, just make sure that they're aligned again. Should be pretty easy. If you have this magnet here selected, it will automatically fall into place again. So also make sure that this magnet is most of the time selected. Also called snapping. And as you can see, since it's aligned again, we're going to right click again. And so here, what we're going to do then is just click on this, hold control and actually select the second one as well. So make sure that with control, you only select these two here. Right click again. 
I can do link clips once again and it'll be selected again and as you can see the clips are together again just something quick I wanted to mention there now actually something else what you also might want to do obviously is a transition now you can already see it here video transitions once again you can see here the preview of what the transition is going to do so here we have a basic uh, fade in fade out you can also cross clips of course so if I'm going to zoom in here for example so I do that by holding alt and scroll with the mouse I'm going to zoom in here on a specific point in this case where the cursor is as you can see to always zoom in and zoom out just use alt hold alt and then do the scroll and so here for example i wanted to do the so i'm just going to do for example the blur dissolve just going to put that right here and this isn't the best example because it's the same window but you'll see the resolve so i'm going to jump right in as you can see that's what it is it kind of does that transition with a blur that's just an example make sure that you click on it and if you have it selected you will see here the details in this case about the blur transition so it can be boxed because you can see here you can have all kinds of different blurs and the duration of course and frames it's all right here it's pretty basic and then once again if you want to delete it once again make sure it's selected and you can also on your keyboard click on delete to actually delete it as well and so if you want to go out of effects just click effects up here again and there you go so i'm just actually going to continue doing this right here and doing the same edits that i showed earlier so as you can see there we go i want to take this part do ctrl b again and i drag it right here it's the same principle it repeats itself now i actually wanted to show you the full screen option here in cut so as you can remember we have to go back to the basics in editing which is going to be the cut window here and so i paused at a good moment in the video and if i go full screen here and i play it As you can see there you go so there you go you can actually see it in full screen here in this window if you need to if there's something you want to make sure that you can't really see from a distance but you want to see close up to make sure that everything's all right in your video that's how you can do full screen but as i said i'm just going to continue editing here a bit the same way i've been doing so far Also, I have to remind you that from time to time you have to save the project, of course, to don't lose anything. So what you do then is go to file here, do save project as. And so then here, as you can see, it will actually show you. Now, for me, I know this is video 194. You call it whatever you want, then you do save. And so next time you did a couple of edits and you feel like it's been a while since you saved it, just go back here, save project as. Make sure you remove the copy behind it. Do save again, do overwrite. And there you go. So just do that once in a while while editing so that you don't forget it. And once again, that you don't lose essential parts of your editing. Okay, so there you go. I just finished the uh, whole editing phase here. So I'm going to zoom out. You can also do that up here, by the way. As you can see, this is all of the footage. If I take this bar right here, I'm just going to put it up a little bit. Did everything as I showed you earlier. There's nothing special there. Now let me actually add a new audio track here because I'm going to add a song. I'm going to show you how to actually make that song quieter and fit in with the actual video. I'm going to right click here, do add track and do stereo. Always make sure it's in stereo. And what I'm going to do then is just search for a song here. It's going to be the same principle. It's going to be right click here and do import media. Okay, so I have my own folder right here for background music. So I'm just going to choose this one right here. Now you can just same thing, have to drag it here onto the timeline. Now don't start dragging with your cursor right now because the song will be very loud. So what you want to do then is just select the clip here and then go here. As you can see it will be the audio inspector. So what you want to do then is just directly put the volume down. Once again just make sure you're in this rectangle here and that the arrow icon is there so that you can just drag it down. So obviously when you go down in the negative it's going to be quieter and otherwise it will be louder if you go up. But I generally I don't have like a because the songs are all different I don't have a general setting that I want the volume at. I just adapt from the song in question. And so because it's background music we want it to be pretty quiet. So what I'm going to do then I'm just going to cut it right here because here is actually going to be audio playing already. So I'm just going to do ctrl b again and just going to drag this out right here because as I said there's already music playing here. So now I'm just going to go to the different points in the video and listen to the loudest part of the song. Okay I found it here so i'm just gonna listen is when you go here to projects click on your look as you can see it gets pretty loud and it doesn't have to distract you know because it is background music just gonna put this little bit just remove this right here you can, you can do it like this is like a trim end you know but you can also just do it like this and then do ctrl b once again and then just click this and then or click uh, delete on your keyboard or do delete selected right here and it'll cut it off as well okay so there you go i actually found it i want to put it at minus 49.60 so i'm just going to do it for this first clip as well just going to do minus 49.60. There you go. And I actually kind of want to have a fade out at the end as I always do with the audio. So what I'm going to do then is just click here. Make sure I have this little white dot here and just drag it like this. 
And if I take this little circle here, this dot, I'll actually be able to do it like this. As you can imagine, it's a pretty fast fade out. This is going to be a slower one. So I'm just going to listen here. I generally cut it around here and make sure that it gradually goes down from there. So let's listen. Subscribe with us, really nice. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. So there you go, it fades out like this. At the end, I generally have a couple of seconds of emptiness just for it to fade out a bit. But there you go, so I'm just going to save this again. Of course, like I said before, just remove this, save, overwrite. Okay, so then we've come to the end. I have edited everything out of the audio. Now there's of course only one thing left, very important though. It's going to be the render, so I'm going to go to File, Quick Export. Just click YouTube here if it's for YouTube, otherwise you can just do a customized one here but generally i'm assuming you're doing it for youtube so we have it right here as you can see the resolution is here the fps as i said i did change at the beginning so it's the fps of the recording which is 60 fps stereo of course and then 320 is going to be the time displayed on youtube and then what you want to do is of course click on export here i could also sign in here and then immediately put this towards youtube since i also do pre-uploads so i actually have settings that are already pre-made so i don't really need to do that i prefer to do it myself but that is something you could do if you want, is to like log in and immediately send it towards YouTube. But then of course what we're going to do is do export. And there we go, I'm just going to do it in video here. So this is a preference, it depends where you want to save it. So I'm just going to save it right here. And as you can see, it will start rendering. It's actually pretty fast compared to other editing softwares I've had. DaVinci Resolve actually has a quite fast render speed. And there you go, when it's finished it will say rendering completed. You can just click close here. And there you go, if there's nothing more you want to do, you can just close out of the software here. If everything is saved, of course, and if you exported it, you would be done here. But in any case, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. This really was trying to go over a really a beginner and a basic tutorial in DaVinci Resolve. I really tried to show you the basics here. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, it would be really nice. Subscribe to us, it would be really nice. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.